Hey, how's it going everybody? Jack here once again with another unboxing video. It's been a while since I've done one of these. The package I have today is from Colby Jones. Now, if you don't know who that is, you will soon. He's an up-and-coming artist. Oh, I don't know if he's an up-and-coming anymore. He, he's just a great artist. How about that? If you don't know what he makes, he makes Leatherface masks. Yes, that's right. I'm doing Leatherface content. I know a lot of people who watch my channel have basically begged me to get back into Leatherface, and my explanation as to why I'm not doing Leatherface content anymore is simply because I don't have the size for Leatherface the way I used to. So that's the explanation for that. Today, we're going to be a... <laughs> Incoming mail! Incoming mail! Sorry, I just saw that and thought it was funny. I'm not very professional. Where was I? The mask in this package is called the Dapper Darling, which is his take on the pretty woman mask as seen worn by Leatherface in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Alright, let's open her up. How about you bring that camera on? And now for the reveal. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that immediately took me back. Holy crap. Oh, that's nice. Let's get this out of the box. Oh, man. It's been too long since I've had anything to do with Leatherface masks. I think the last one I did was the Batman version 2. And that was in what? 2020? I'm being a tease, not just showing the camera, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Look at the Dapper Darling. That is an incredible mask. Let me get it on a mask stand real quick. All right, this is the Dapper Darling made by Colby Jones. And the great thing about this mask is that it was made using a similar method to the one used in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where they would do a layer of latex and then a layer of uh, fiberglass, which resulted in this really realistic and eerie, like dried skin effect that is not present in any of the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. So, that's that's probably why this mask is seeming to stand out, at least to me, against other Leatherface masks. Look at that mask. Look at the details. I feel like I say that in every unboxing. Well, look at the detail on that mask. There's only so many things I can say when I don't have a script to work with. <laughs> I'm not a... I'm not an on-the-fly person. I need a piece of paper with words on it, and even then I usually mess that up. All right. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Jack, that mask is tan. It's not white. Well, the mask was never white. It was, you know, tan, just like the killing mask was. And then when Leatherface applied the makeup to it, it had the, the white powder makeup and the lipstick and eye, eyeshadow, of course. But one thing that people tend to get wrong about the Pretty Woman mask is that it was a white mask, and it's just not. No, it was not white. It was tan, just like the Killing Mask, but it had makeup applied to it. Now, when I talked to Kobe about him making this mask, you know, he was a very, very good communication-wise. Uh, he wanted to know exactly what I wanted, which was what I have here. When he went to the painting, I requested that it not be too perfect. You know, I wanted to see some speckles of white powder makeup lingering on the mask. I didn't want it to be all one shade. And 
I think he nailed that. <laughs> I really think he did. So, another cool thing about this mask is that it's not latex all the way. It's um, it's actually held together by the wig, just like the masks in the original movie. There's a lot of cool stuff going on with this mask, and I wish that I had more detailed information to give you about what went into making it. Well, I do have some good news. I have an interview set up with Kobe. Now, when that will be, I don't know. But in the interview, I'm going to talk to him about what went into making the mask and all the details regarding that. Now, when that will be, I don't know. I need to set up a lot of stuff before then, specifically a computer. Now, this particular video was filmed on a phone, but I have acquired a really good camera and, you know, I'm sure as you can tell, a microphone as well because I'm trying to get to the point where I can make bigger and better projects, you know, for you guys. And because that's really what I've always wanted to do. And I have some projects in the works and I keep saying that. I, I've repeated myself saying that a bunch of times, but it's true. And these are projects that are larger scale, have a, you know, I'm, I won't say they have a decent... Uh, production value, but they they will have a production value. And so, when I finally obtain a computer where I can edit the footage on the camera, I will then be setting up my interview with Kobe, who is more than happy to be part of it. And I guess we'll see where we go from there. All right, I guess that's everything, you guys. As brief as that seems, I think that just about wraps everything up. If you like this video, make sure to check out my other stuff. And if you like that, you can subscribe to my channel if you'd like to. Uh, this has been Jack. And I don't have an outro. See you around, YouTube.